Hey, what's up, Improvement Warrior? Jason Yun, back with you again. Welcome to Improvement Warrior Podcast, episode number seven. Back outside for this one. This one is going to be covering all about sleep. I've done videos before on sleep, and I even made a video going over my 15 sleep habits, but I have since increase that list to a total of 36 and it should just continue to expand from there so this will be part one of sleep not much of an introduction i've been doing basically the same stuff it's been very very nice in terms of the sunny days so i've been out soaking up the vitamin d i finished the book on audible Again, it's been a while since I read it, but it was Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. Good book. I'll link it up in the show notes, but basically it's you've got to eat the biggest frog of the day in order to move yourself forward. And he gives 21 tips on how to increase productivity and all that. But um, we tend to go to the easiest frog and not the, the hardest frog or the, the biggest frog. And those are the ones that will drive us the thought most forward in terms of our mindset, career, life, and what we're working on. And started the David Goggins book, You Can't Hurt Me, again, for the fourth time. Again, I'm going to be reading that book. I'll do two books, uh, two non-David Goggins books, and then I'll go back to David Goggins' book because I want that mindset ingrained into me. So, and plus I watch videos of his all the time on YouTube and follow him on Instagram. So follow him on Instagram. I think every once or twice a week he puts out a motivational message that, uh, well, not a motivational message, but something that gets you in to stay hard and keep that that mindset that, hey, we're in this for the long haul. Your problems today, they're not going to matter tomorrow. They're not going to matter five years from now. Get to work, make yourself better, make the world better. Because there are so many pansies out there, and we're having manhood destroyed and all that stuff. But that's the world we live in. If you want to change, if you want the world to change, you have to first change yourself. So we've got to go. And sleep is one of the best ways that we can change ourselves for the better. And sleep is the the ultimate it is the I mean if your sleep sucks your health is gonna suck it is that it is that simple no if ands buts about it promos so uh, recording this uh, towards the end of July my next 34 day light challenge number five is gonna be starting up August 9th 2021 if you missed the date don't worry you can enter the light challenge at any time and, yep, so 34-day light challenge is improvementwarriorfitness.com slash light challenge. I'll hook that up in the show notes. Show notes for this one will be improvementwarriorfitness.com slash IYP or IWP7. And, of course, support this podcast on Patreon. I should have a PayPal support up as well. But the podcast is free to you, but it's not free to me. It takes a lot of time to put these together, edit them, and get all the content out. But I know that this content is changing people's lives, whether it's just one person at a time. That's perfectly fine. That's how you create a movement of change. And that's what we need. We need change. We need better humans. We don't need... The same old, same old of people having their minds destroyed, having their bodies destroyed, and having their lives destroyed. Again, it is up to you. So you wouldn't be listening to this if you didn't want to change something. Okay, it's the Improvement Warrior Podcast. It's not the watch shit TV, eat shit food, and become a jackass podcast. Okay? I'm sure those podcasts exist, but it's not it's not this one. All right. So uh, support me on Patreon. It's Improvement Warrior. Just search there and I should have that PayPal up pretty soon. 
And uh, we reviewed the podcast, so go to your favorite app. Still trying to work on getting up the iTunes. Uh, that should be done by the, by hopefully, when this podcast goes up or the eighth episode, which I already have planned out. And, yeah, give me a review. Tell me what you think. Tell me how to improve and what you want to hear. Okay? What episodes you want to hear, what guests you want to have on. So I do plan to have on guests. It's not going to be just me blabbering and blabbering and blabbering because I'm sure you get tired of my voice. All right. But let's get into this sleep podcast. It's all about sleep. So these are my sleep tips. And this is part one on sleep. So I will make multiple editions of sleep. And this is just best tips, 36 tips. And future ones, I'll go into the importance of sleep, deep sleep, the stages of sleep, and what it's actually doing in the brain, what it's actually doing for autophagy, mitophagy, um, mitochondria, all that stuff. Here we go. These are in no particular order. The first 15 are what I do, and then I added some other ones. So, number one. Room is as dark as possible. This is important because circadian biology, as you know, is the number one factor for health. And if you want to be in the light when the light is out, and you want to be in the dark when the dark comes out. So when the sun sets, those blue blockers are on. Okay, so the eyes don't see it, but also the skin doesn't see the light. And yeah, so the, the darkness is just as needed as the light. Okay, so it's yin and yang. So we need that complete opposite in order to achieve the, most, the best balance and whatnot. So dark room. So if your hand is in front of your, if your hand is in front of your face, you should not be able to see your hand in that room. Okay? If you do, it is not dark enough. Number two, phone on airplane mode. Okay? This one should be obvious, but if you, I mean, there's people that still sleep with their phone under their, their bed, not on airplane mode, okay? But phone needs to be on airplane mode, preferably have it away from you, Get a Defender Shield if you can, because the creator of Defender Shield said even if it is on airplane mode, it's still it's submitting, emitting some form of EMF. I have not found that, but my tester is just a, a simple Cornet EMF meter, so um, I don't know. But I trust Defender Shield completely. They also make Faraday cages, little pouches, and book bags that you can put your stuff in and whatnot. Two hours completed. But calories, keep, that, calories. keep that phone on airplane mode whenever you're not need, using it, but especially when you are sleeping. Three, Wi-Fi is off. This is basically the same thing. We don't want to have interrupting signals interrupting our brain. Okay, so... We want to get into the deep sleep. We want to get into the delta waves. Um, we want to go into REM sleep. We want to get into stage three, stage four of sleep. Those are the most recovering sleep. So those will cover our mitochondria. Autophagy will kick in. Mitophagy, recovering the my mitochondria. All that stuff will start to kick in. Okay. So Wi-Fi off. They just completely unplug it. So it's just one plug and everything just comes off. Uh, you can also have a, uh, a kill switch, but you have to have an electrician put it in. And basically, you just in, in your room, you just click a switch and it turns off certain circuit breakers in your house. Okay. A little bit more expensive, but if you can afford that, I would recommend that. Number four. Power grid turned off. This ties into the kill switch. So you can have that kill switch installed, but basically in our upstairs rooms, we have no power on. Um, so there's three rooms up there. There's no power. Or there actually, there's four rooms up there. There's a playroom up there. There's no power in those rooms. Okay. Um, 
for some reason there is power in the master bathroom and that's kind of what we run the extension cords out of but for the most part power turned off because we um, with those ele electricity outlets the outlets basically dirty electricity is one of the big things that um, can affect you really really bad so dirty electricity can come out of your walls come out of your sockets and um, your skin is a conductor you are a semiconductor um, it can absorb frequencies and stuff like that 5g can jump into our skin and that's why it's 4g 3g all those frequencies can jump into our um, into our skin and affect our mitochondria affect our cells again the number one thing with non-native emf is dehydration mitochondria is dehydrated it doesn't work properly your cells dehydrated you don't work properly you're working under wi-fi blue light eight hours a day and you can't drink enough water you can't eat enough dha okay? we have to change our environment in order to become optimal number five room as cold as possible okay so, so it's pretty simple um we keep the thermostat during us at 72 in the summer it should be colder than that if you can get it colder than that but i use a, a fan my wife uses a fan as well um so you want to be as cold as possible there um used to sleep on a, a dog chili pad but that broke so um they also make a i think it's called chili pad basically where you sleep on it and it keeps your it keeps the temperature like 60 65 you set the temperature where you want it to be but the colder you are the because melatonin is supposed to lower your core body temperature so melatonin can actually come out and do its magic of restoring the mitochondria and helping the respiratory proteins and all the cells and helping us basically just recover. Okay. So room as close as possible. Sleep mask number six. This goes back to the eyes. Eyes don't want to see any darkness or any, any light at all. So any light that creeps in. I mean, even if you're in a blue lit room and you close your eyes the the eyelid is so thin blue light can penetrate four to six millimeters so the eyelid is so thin blue light will still come through there but that sleep mask is going to make it completely i mean it's not even an issue so um again the room should be as dark as possible but you want that extra protection i use a wrap around so it actually covers my ears as well some people use ear plugs um, that's not on the list, but that's another sleep tip that you can engage in. Seven is breathing. I have box breathing, so box breathing is so the standard box breathing set is five seconds in, five second hold, five second exhale, five second hold. And repeat that for as many cycles as you can. But breath is, I'm working on the webinar right now the 14th pillar uh, it'll be higher than number 14 but 14th pillar of health basically breathing oxygen and carbon dioxide essential to life so the most optimal breath is five and a half seconds in five and a half seconds out that equals five and a half breaths per minute but if you can't do that always try and make your exhale longer than <coughs> your inhale Breathing is absolutely essential to getting your body calmed down for sleep. Number eight, <clears throat> sunrise and UVA exposure. Never miss the sunrise. You miss the sunrise, you fail your health. It's that simple. Sunrise, you have the most blue light. When it first rises, and it's always accompanied with red sometimes if you can catch the sun just coming up you will see that it is red 
Okay, and then it turns basically first like the orange, orangish, and then it goes to the yellow, which it stays the rest of the day until sunset. So never miss that sunrise because that sunrise, your melanopsin receptors in your eye and your skin, and the melanopsin is our blue light antenna. Okay, it wants to see blue light from the sun, accompanied with red and accompanied with all the other spectrums that the sun has. That's why artificial man-made blue light is so devastating to the eye and the skin because it doesn't know what to do with that because it's only blue. There's no other spectrums with it and it absolutely jacks us up and mitochondria go haywire and cell chaos and inflammation and all that stuff occurs from there. So never miss the sunrise. <clears throat> then UVA. So when it varies where you are, and it varies the time of the year when UVA will show up. But um, on the D-Minder app, it just goes from zero to one. So it will tell you when it's a full one. But remember, there's different parts in different spectrums. So it would be 0.1 UVA, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.3338, 4. Okay, so UVA is constantly rising after a certain amount of time. I don't know the exact uh, angle of inclination, but it's always good to just get out. So I will usually do the sunrise, then I'll come home, get my son and or daughter, take them for a walk around the neighborhood shirtless and in shorts. Uh, so that way I'm guaranteeing myself of being out for the UVA. Okay. So remember, UVA is also when we create nitric oxide, which helps us do a lot of things. Um, I went over that in the webinar, um, Circadian Biology Part 3, and I believe 2, but basically, no UVA, you can't produce, um, or, I'm sorry, no nitric oxide, you can't produce the 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 right amount of vitamin D and the right amount of melanin and all kinds of different things. So it's a succession that needs to occur. Okay. So never miss sunrise. Try to be out for as much UVA as possible okay. before the strongest UVB. So Dr. Cruz says anywhere between 8 to 11 Sometimes you'll say 8 to 12, depending on where you live. So it just depends on your latitude and whatnot. Number nine, no caffeine. So no caffeine, I say, after 10 a.m. Okay, Different people process caffeine differently. They say the half-life of caffeine is, I believe, 12 hours. So if it's 10 a.m., then... At at 10 p.m., half of that caffeine that you drank is still going to be in your system. Um, but it's for different people, it's processed differently. Just know how you handle it. And also, if you wake up and you need caffeine, that's an indication your sleep sucks. Okay? So getting off the caffeine is one of the best things that you can do. Okay? Um, if you are a coffee drinker, I would recommend switching one week caffeinated, one week decaffeinated, okay? And see how you do on the decaffeinated, okay? Do you crave it? Do you need it, okay? Because there's a difference between just making it a habit and doing it every day, every day, every day versus actually seeing if you need it, okay? So it's kind of like eating and fasting, like, are you actually hungry or are you just eating at a certain time because your body is so used to eating at a certain time? We don't want to eat just because it's a certain time. We want to eat when we're hungry. And now a quick message from one of our sponsors. Got workouts? I do. I believe everybody should have their own home gym because working out under blue light and Wi-Fi can be detrimental to your health. My online workout program, LBN Online Strength and Fitness Workouts, makes working out from home 
a cinch. Or you can even take the workouts anywhere you go in the world. With over 300 follow along workouts with me in 15 different workout genres from pre-beginner all the way to advanced, working out at home has never been easier. I show you how to do each exercise, the equipment needed for each workout, and ways to make it easier, harder, or work around an injury. Check it out today at lbnonlinefitness.com and start your free trial today. Number 10, blue blockers. A minimum of four hours before bed. And this obviously will, if you're, I mean, if you're outside and the, it's still sunny out, obviously you don't need them on. But if you're inside, you're on a computer, you're watching TV, and you're on any technology, you've got blue lights coming on, you're doing your uh, errands, grocery shopping or whatever, okay, that's when the blue blockers need to come on. Um, so any technology, any blue light that you're around, put them on. Just put them on. Uh, but otherwise, four hours before bed, put them on. Okay, I'll put the links up for the different blue blockers that we recommend, Midwestern Light Therapy, Raw Optics, okay, other brands and whatnot. Number 11, no melatonin. No exogenous melatonin. Okay. No supplemental melatonin. And the reason for this is if your body makes it, you are not designed to take it. And if you continue to take it over and over and over again, your endogenous, your body's ability to make it, is going to go down. Okay. And when that goes down, that is going to be a real problem. Because now you're just relying on a fake source Okay, and melatonin is driven by light, just like pretty much all of our hormones and all of most of our um, neurotransmitters, they're driven by light. So tryptophan makes serotonin, serotonin goes on to make melatonin, okay, it's all a process. Everything is connected. No melatonin for bed. Um, Dr. Cruz talks about the one time that you can do it, but it's a person-to-person -person thing, is when you're flying. Um, and I believe he says when you're flying west coast to east coast. Because he says that is when you really get messed up. Okay. Number 12, no food four hours before bed. This ties into circadian nutrition and your leptin. Because your leptin status will go, leptin needs four hours of no food in order to basically go into the brain and tell the energy status of the body. Leptin also needs darkness, four hours of darkness. Okay? That's why we put the, the, blue lock, the blue blockers on four hours uh, before bed. So leptin needs four hours, darkness, four hours, no food in order to tell the energy status of the body. Remember, leptin is your accountant energy accountant of your body and yeah so and also don't eat when it's dark out try and eat when it is still light out i typically will stick with a rule um especially in the winter time because it gets dark at like 4 50 4 45 um at the dark at the when the light is the lowest um typically i'll give myself a leeway of 30 minutes um, but the more sick you are, the more you need to be sticking to the rules because each time you break the rules of nature, that becomes a circadian mismatch. And the more circadian mismatches you have, the faster you will speed up the disease. You'll speed up the aging. You'll speed up inflammation and you'll basically die faster. All right. Number 13 bed by 11 PM. This ties into leptin as well because leptin goes into the brain sometime between 12 a.m. and 2 a.m. So you need to be asleep by 12 a.m. Um, preferably 11 is the latest you want to be asleep by. So I typically try to get to bed sometime between 10.15 to 
10.45. Okay? Don't always make it, but that's my, my goal. Number 14, tape your mouth. Okay? I'll put the, the tape that I use. It's basically a 3M surgical tape. A lot of people, they don't... They feel a lot of anxiety when I tell them to tape their mouth. But this is one of the absolute best things that I have done. And, I mean, it's my sleep. And, I mean, I do a lot of things, as you know, by listening to podcasts and listening to me and my videos and all that stuff to improve my health and improve sleep and improve basically everything. And this is one thing that I noticed like that. Magic. Okay? It is magic. Okay? Don't worry about this. Don't think about it. Just do it. Do it for a week, and you will not go back, ever. Okay? I typically will do a three, uh, three tape job. So I'll do one on the left, one down the middle, one on the right. Um, to start, just do a one down the middle. So I just do one down the middle when I do my conditioning workouts, and it stays on perfectly fine. Um, one thing you do have to watch out for is sometimes I will put like uh, a coconut oil, essential oil base on my base, and it will make my my upper lip and lower lip a little. It won't let the tape stick to me as well. So typically, I remember I had to wipe that off around that area. Um, so if you're putting on any lotion, and I mean, the only lotion you, you shouldn't be using, like definitely don't be using a vino or anything like that because um, it was just announced last week that Johnson & Johnson pulled their vino crap and also their sunscreen for having toxic chemicals in their products. Who would have thought? Okay, Johnson & Johnson. Johnson and Johnson. Okay. So they are known for their putting the baby powder, all that stuff. They are basically criminals and murderers, basically. Um, but yeah, just start with one piece of tape, and you, then you can go from there, see how you feel. Um, it sometimes comes off, so it came off last night um, for some reason. Uh, I did put the oils on, but... It came off last night, but I mean, typically it's, I'd say 90, 95% of the time it stays on the entire time. Okay. So it, with the, and starting with just one, when you do wake up, it's, I mean, it's easy to, all you have to do is just open your mouth and it's done. Okay. So it's not like duct tape. Don't duct tape. Don't use Gorilla tape. That'd be stupid. <laughs> okay. And obviously you keep your nose Keep the tape away from your nose as much as possible. Then number 15 is open a window or sleep outside. Okay, A tent, a shelter, something. So always, that's one of my rules for basically everything. Always open the window, um, especially if the window has the sun, if the sun is facing that window. Um, coming towards it because the, the light from the sun is non-linear. So it just takes a small stimulus for that light to actually do have a major impact on your life. And usually the windowsills are made of aluminum. So the aluminum is going to refract that light and it's going to send that light in to your house and it's going to bounce all around. It's going to give you benefits. Okay, So no matter how cold it is, how hot it is, even when I'm driving, if it's pouring down rain, I will still crack that window. So those were the original 15. Now we're going to move into the new 20, or 16 through 36. So that should be 21, I believe. So 16, uh, taper your water as you get closer to bedtime. So this is important, especially if you are waking up in the middle of the night, waking up in, uh, to go to the bathroom. Waking up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom is it's not normal. Okay, sometimes it happens. All right, I sometimes will do it. I'd say same thing with the. 
I think, since I started taping my mouth, it's almost non-existent. Probably just, I'd say less than 3% of nights. So, um, from the book uh, Breathe by James Nestor, it's because of a hormone. And I forget the hormone. It starts with a P. But because of that hormone, it basically shuts those mechanisms down. So the, the need to urinate, it shuts it down. So you can sleep and you can rest and you can restore and all the good stuff there. So taper your water as you get closer to your bedtime. And you're going to have to play around with that because you can, you, I mean, each person is going to be different. I can't give you a recommendation on water. And the recommendation I recommend for water is eventually get up to half your body weight in ounces throughout the day. Um, but as you get closer to bedtime, you're going to have to play around with that. Number 17, electronics. Get off of electronics one hour before bed minimum. Some people recommend two. This is one that I break most nights, um, unfortunately. But I am, I am always grounded, and my computer is always grounded. I'll put the grounding cord for the computer and also the grounding bracelet that I wear. Okay, but still, you should be off the, off the electronics for one hour because that, those frequencies are still there and they're affecting your, your body. They raise um, body temperature, skin temperature, and brain temperature and all that stuff. And at nighttime, that's when we want to be winding down. So we are telling the circadian rhythm, hey, it's time to settle down. Number 18, computer uh, using Iris software, also a grounding cord, grounding cable, which I just covered in the last one. Okay, so Iris is the blue blocking software. I have it on my computer right now. My screen is completely red. And so I always keep it on zero, basically, the entire day. And when I'm inside, I will be wearing blue blockers because they say there is always a backlit blue light on the computer that you cannot turn off. I don't know if it's, I don't know if Iris does turn it off or not, but I always wear blue blockers when I'm inside on the computer. 19, for your TV, this is a new one, install Waken. So this is a, it's basically a, a blue blocking screen for your computer. Um, a fellow mitochondriac created this and we've been using it. It's because I wanted something because my wife won't wear blue blockers on a regular basis. My daughter does, but my son who's two, uh, actually 24 or 25 months now, uh, he won't wear blue blockers. He won't put anything, keep anything over his face. So, um, so it's excellent. So they have an amber one, which blocks about 80%. That's the one we have on this screen at all times. Uh, I, there's a red one that blocks 100% of the light and wife won't let that happen. So if she goes on a trip, an extended trip, I will typically put the red over the amber and watch it that way. But it's been, it's awesome. Check it out. It's shopwaken.com. I'll put it in the, the show notes. But it's, yeah, it's, a, it's really nice. I still wear the blue blockers, of course. Um, but yeah, it's, a, it's an awesome invention. They also make it for iPads, laptops, I think desktops. So check them out. Check out all our products out. 20. If around in front of blue light, clothes, neck gaiter, socks, Blankets. Okay, so this goes into the, the melanopsin receptor again, your blue lit blue light antenna. Likes to see blue light, but likes to see it from the sun. And so you need to protect your your skin 
the most important after the eyeballs is the thyroid. Okay, so I always have a neck gaiter anytime I go into Costco or Aldi's or Fresh Time or any store, restaurant, anything like that. And uh, clothes, I always typically I'll wear yeah I'll always wear a hat when I go into a store, or I'll wear a I'll pull up my hoodie. I have I keep. In my wife's car and my car, I keep a, a long sleeve sweatshirt and I keep a pair of sweatpants. So that way I always have clothes on hand. So the only thing that is exposed is basically my hands and cheeks and the top of my neck. Okay. I probably could get away with wearing a ski mask, but not up to that point. I've heard of people who watch TV, they will actually uh, wear a ski mask and they wear gloves. And I've heard of one other guy actually sitting in a box and he's got little eye holes carved out and he's just watching with his blue blockers. So, <laughs> yeah, he wouldn't need to do that if he got wakened. So. Uh, yeah, so that's what I do. Um, if I'm watching... TV at night, uh, sometimes I'll wear socks, sometimes I'll just, sometimes my dog is sitting there, I'll just slide my feet under the, the dog, sometimes I'll slide them in between the cushions. Uh, yeah, so always, yeah, you've, you've got to be a freak about this stuff. I mean, it's, blue light is, can be associated with every single disease, every single one, uh, because it ties into circadian disruption, it ties into sleep loss, melatonin loss, vitamin D loss. Um, you can't make the proper amount of melanin depending on how much blue light you're exposed to. So, and you could have melan uh, melangen I forget, uh, melanogenesis or melasma, melasma. So just de decoloring of the skin. Okay. And that's a blue light disease. It's not because of the, the sun, which dermatologists would probably tell you. And they'll probably did tell you to recommend or they'll prescribe you a prescription to rub on it, but whatever. Fucking dermatologist. 21. Bare hand phone. Okay, so don't be bare, fit, bare handing the, the phone. Um, I put 90 minutes here for some reason. Um, I don't know what that means, but I... So if you're barehanding the phone, so it's not in a shield, use a defender shield here, and then you can just fold it back. And then you're actually not, when I'm holding it here, I'm not actually touching it. And then obviously when you make a call, just close it. They say you can just put the phone up on your head. I would never do that um, because I want, I want and I believe that the stigma that, doing this is normal is just it's completely fucking wrong never put your phone up against your head okay it's just stupid it's moronic this is a microwave rf device okay you're microwaving your head when you do that so always hold the phone out in front of you if you're making a call uh, i used to use a selfie stick when before i had the the defender shield and then i basically hold the, the selfie stick and then Basically, type with my finger, whatever I was doing, scroll with the finger, all that stuff. And also, in my hat, I always have aluminum foil. And actually, I have an extra smart meter cover that I put underneath the foil. And so I have the smart meter cover, and then the foil, and then the hat goes on. Um, so what I... Uh, before I had the selfie stick, I would basically put the phone in the hat. So it was inside the aluminum foil, so I wasn't actually touching the phone. Uh, because remember, the radiator of our body is the uh, right at the wrist, the wrist joint. So that's where people, if they want to commit suicide, they'll cut themselves there because the blood won't stop. That's the blood basically, forget how long it takes, but it gets around the entire body really quickly. So if you're touching the phone, Bare phoned in, not on airplane mode. Basically, it's radiating your blood, radiating your skin, 
and that blood is circulating all through your body. Okay. Number 22, no exercise four hours before bed. So this goes back to when you do sleep, you want to, you eventually want the body to be as cool as possible. Um, I believe that happens somewhere between two and or three and four or three to five a.m. somewhere in there. So like two to five a.m. somewhere in there, melatonin is starting to be released and melatonin is dropping the the core temperature as low as possible in order to restore the body. And if we work out too soon before bed, that is a problem because it's going to raise our core temperature. Um, also, if you do exercise the four hours before bed, most people like to eat something after exercise. And if you're doing that four hours before bed, then that's not good because you're not supposed to do that because of the leptin receptor. And... Yeah, so I used to, I broke this all the time. So I used to work at Discover Card. I worked second shift, usually 12 or 3, I think it was 3 p.m. To, to, to midnight. And I would get off. I would go over to the 24-hour Lifetime Fitness, 12.30, get my workout in, come home, 2 a.m., 2.30, eat, 3 a.m., go to bed. And then next day, do it again. So stupid living, but I was young. I was in my, it was right when I graduated college. So mid twenties there, not a smart man. 23, never oversleep. Okay. This ties into seeing the sunrise every morning. Remember sunrise is going to change throughout the year. So when we have the most light, it's typically it. Here in 40th latitude, Columbus, Ohio, it's at 6 a.m., 5.57, I believe it got down to. Uh, and then in the winter, when we have the stupid daylight savings and all that stuff, it goes up to 8, I believe 8.15, 8.10, somewhere around there is when it is. Okay, so I typically sleep more in the, in the winter months than I do the, the summer. Um, but never oversleep, so never miss that, that sunrise. And it also trains your circadian clock. It says this cortisol is supposed to help wake us up at a certain time um, after we've had the, the deep sleep and all that stuff. 24, sleep pills. Sleep aids and non-melatonin sleep aids. Okay. You want to get off of those as quick as possible. Because obviously, taking any drugs is it's bad for the gut. It's bad for the brain. It's bad for your mitochondria. It's bad for everything. Um, remember, if your body makes it, you're not supposed to take it. And most sleep aids, they've got something bad in them. A lot of them have melatonin in them. Never take that melatonin. And yeah, we want to be able to sleep naturally. And then we want to wake up naturally. We want to wake up so we do not need caffeine. We do not need stimulants to make us get through the day. Okay, Basically, we've got the energy. If, you're, if you don't have the energy, you're basically dying. And then if you're constantly looking for outside sources to get that energy, then that's an issue, okay? And the more you do it, the more your body is going to deteriorate, okay? And the harder it is to get off of it, okay? So we want to get off the sleep pills. We want to get off the sleep aids as quick as humanly possible. 25, medications, okay? Kind of in the same realm, but most medications are not needed. So if you need blood pressure medications, okay, why do you need blood pressure medications? Look at your lifestyle. How was your lifestyle before? Remember, you need to change your environment. Your environment is a whole bunch of things. It's how much you outside, how much you inside. Where's the Wi-Fi? Where's the, is the Wi-Fi on? Okay, where's your smart meter? 
Okay. How do you sleep? What's your sleep environment like? Okay. How much are you grounding? How much cold exposure are you getting? How much DHA are you getting? What's your nutrition like? Are you working out? Where are you working out? Are you working out under blue lights? Are you working out outside? Okay. Are you reading? What are you putting into your mind? What are you listening to? These are all environments. So what kind of people are you hanging around? Are you hanging around negative, do nothing bitches? Okay. Or are you hanging around people? Are you listening to people that are positive? Are you listening to Les Brown, Tony Robbins, Grant Cardone, David Goggins? Are you listening to other people that are exactly like you and you're just trying to stay exactly like you? You're not pushing yourself. Okay? These are all environments and we need to get out of, if we want to get better, we need to change the environment. Okay? We don't need to change all the environments all at once because that would typically stress a person too much and stress is an environment. We want to have as low stress as possible, okay? But we still need stress, okay? Working out is a stress, right? So we stress the body, and then we recover the body, and that's how the body gets stronger. That's how the mind gets stronger, okay? But medications, okay, most of them are not needed. Now, I mean, if you're a type 1 diabetic, okay, Jack Cruz has said he has reversed type 1 diabetics. Okay, but most people have the mind, most diabetic, type 1 diabetics have the mindset, no, that's impossible. So I remember there was a, uh, there was a type 1 diabetic at the fitness conferences that I used to uh, attend, my old fitness group, coaching group, and asked her if she ever tried the ketogenic diet, and she was like, no, she just continued on her insulin, eating carbs and whatever, okay, but... Keto is a good way to start the process of needing less insulin, okay? But you just got to take it as is, all right? Um, obviously, talk to your doctor. If the doctor is open to helping you get off of them or reducing them severely, okay, then continue to talk to them, all right? But if the doctor is completely closed off to getting you off your medications, then it's like, fuck you, man. You need to find a new doctor. Okay? Any doctor who is trying to basically keep you a customer, and that's basically what they, doctors are today. They're basically drug pushers. Okay? Any doctor that's just pushing the drugs on you, not talking to you about lifestyle, not talking to you about changing your environment, your, all this stuff, you need to find a new doctor. It is that simple. Number 26, cold exposure. Okay, cold thermogenesis. Water works the best. Okay, they, uh, Jack says water is 24 times better than air. Okay, so those, uh, the air clinics, the hydro, the, I forget the name of it. It's the croto, the cryo labs or the, yeah, it's, I'm drawing a blank on what the, the name is, but the air, they blow in like 300, negative 300 degree air and you have to wear mittens and stuff because you can get frostbite really easy. Um, I just listened to a, a podcast with Luke Story, the lifestyle podcast on the uh, cold thermogenesis thing. He said it was a deep dive into cold thermogenesis, but they didn't talk about they didn't talk about electrons. They didn't talk about magnetism, which is the probably the two most important things in regards to cold thermogenesis. Um, but I'll hook that or link that episode up. It was quite fascinating. And but yeah, water twenty four times more effective in the summertime. My cold thermogenesis protocol is basically four times a week. So right now it's Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. I try to take a cold bath, okay? Um, I need to use ice because typically before the I get in, it's typically like 66 to 72, 73 degrees. And typically I can get it down somewhere between 60 to 65 with the ice. I use re reusable ice because I mean, buying 
that much ice over and over again can get really expensive. Um, there's other ways you can have cold tubs. I just use a horse trow, horse trow from tractor and trailer. Um, there's a, I'll link the article up, but Luke story used to use a, a chest freezer. Okay. Obviously make sure you unplug it before getting in. Um, and then there's other ways that you can do it as well. And then I believe there's more and more popping up. So these, this couple was in really Phoenix. So they've got like centers and businesses that you can go in and get in and get like a, a cold bath. Okay. But cold exposure, you can do a cold shower. Uh, 62 degrees is the temperature that, uh, Dr. Cruz says we change from uh, our brain changes from going from from light or our mitochondria changes from going from judging everything from light judging our environment as sunlight to temperature okay so 62 degrees is that magic number i don't have the actual i'll try to find something in regards to what he says exactly on that and maybe i'll make it the the Dr. Cruz part of this podcast. But yeah, cold exposure. And then one thing else that I had not done in a long time, and I was stupid for not doing it. Um, I didn't feel too hot over the past few days. My wife had a cold. My daughter had a cold. And of course, she believed it was the row the Corona, which it was not. Okay. But, um, I didn't feel too good for a few days, but I didn't get, I didn't go into full, uh, cold. I just had, a basically a bunch of snot. Um, the first day I did have a little congestion in the throat, but that basically went away. Um, I did longer. I did three days in a row of cold exposure longer than I usually do. So I did, I believe, 18 to 22 minutes on average those three days. And then that fourth day was when I really knocked it off and I did face dunks. So I took basically my big um, big cooking pot, filled it up, I used my shower filter water. Um, try not to use tap water if you can avoid it. And then I bought a big bag of ice, put the ice in there, and then I basically just put my face in, uh, going all the way up to my ears. First time you did it, I can basically just, uh, you, you just get your nose into it because it's such a shock to this system. Um, and plus, I haven't had my face in cold water in such a long time. Um, so I face first, did that, and then I would do that as long as I could hold my breath. Then I would come out. And then I basically uh, put my brain in and then do that for as long as I could. And then I go back and forth between those two protocols and I would do that for 10 minutes, about 10 minutes. And the first day I did that for four, I did that four times. So about every three or four hours. And I mean, even though I was not feeling my best at each time I did it for at least an hour, hour and a half, I had mental clarity through the roof. I felt amazing. Okay. And then the next day I just did it one time. So that was yesterday. And then today I'm feeling probably 90, 93% somewhere around there. Um, I will do a cold bath and then a cold a face dunk after that, uh, later tonight. And so tomorrow I should feel back to hundred percent. So face dunks. And that was one of the, the one of the first things that I found when I first read Dr. Cruz's book. He includes that uh, as a, one of his chapters in there, and that's what I actually started with cold thermogenesis back in like 2014, 2015, whenever I read his book for the first time. But didn't stick with it because I was comfortable being comfortable, and cold exposure is something that you need to get uncomfortable with. And it's one of the best ways to train your mind. So anybody who tells you they don't like the cold and they're not willing to try cold thermogenesis, it's basically them just telling you, hey, I'm a bitch. 
Don't be a little bitch. Looks like I have you. Grant Cardone. Champions dominate. Don't be a little bitch. All right. Number 27. Grounding. And Electron Collection. Okay, so the Hall Effect. Whatever has more energy is always going to give more energy to the thing that has less energy. Okay, so I'm sure you've been around somebody who has a lot of energy, and that actually will pick your energy up. Okay, Earth is always going to have more electrons than you. So get his barefoot, get barefoot, walk around, bear crawl, whatever you got to do, lie in the grass. Okay, I'll, I just posted a picture of uh, me, my, me sleeping in the grass. Um, that was one of my recovery protocols uh, when I wasn't feeling too well. That was like the first day. And yeah, so get as much electrons as you can. Uh, the next one will go into what you need to eat in order that, but you should know what it is. Answer it right now. What do you need to eat in order to collect electrons? Okay, but grounding and then the grounding cords. Um, actually, that will come. There's a new thing that I'm doing. Um, I'll talk about that later that helps you ground while you sleep inside. Okay, but there's all kinds of things. There's grounding sheets, there's grounding mats, there's grounding whatever, grounding shoes. Okay, uh, leather based shoes rather than rubber based shoes when you're walking um, on the sidewalk will help you get electrons as well. Okay, but electrons is what makes the world go round. Um, all diseases is basically you're losing electrons and your ratio to electrons to protons is diminishing. So electrons is going down, protons is going up. So your inflammation is going up. <laughs> all right, number 28. What you need to eat in order to gain electrons is DHA. Seafood. Okay, is that simple? However, if you don't follow some of the other rules, like blocking blue light, because DHA will be destroyed by blue light really, really fast, um, you can be at a oyster buffet, and if you're not blocking blue light with the eyes, it doesn't really matter. You can't eat enough DHA to stop the process of the destruction of the blue light, of the DHA, sorry. Okay, so seafood, number one. So oysters is the number one food for DHA. Uh, followed by shellfish, if you are going to eat seafood, uh, or fish, I'm sorry, follow the acronym SMASH. So it's sardines, no, yeah, sardines, mackerel, anchovies, salmon, herring, okay? So typically those are the smaller fish, because the bigger fish are going to have more toxicity, mercury, and whatnot, I remember with seafood, they also have the antidote for mercury poison, which is selenium. Plus, they have the iodine, the copper, the B vitamins, all that stuff. And seafood is basically, they're protected from oxidation, which uh, fish oil is not. And fish oil does not come with iodine and everything else that is its evolutionary package. Plus, seafood needs to be in the SN2 position to get into your brain and central nervous system. Most fish oils are in the SN1, SN3 position. Okay? Um, yeah, so taking an algae pill, not going to work. Sun Cosmetics is number 29. And so I did a whole webinar on that, uh, circadian biology webinar number three. Sun Cosmetics. Sun Cosmetics, what are they? Sunscreen, sunglasses, hats, clothes, blue light, uh, smog, pollution, chemtrails. Okay, uh, I'm not forgetting anything. I'm probably forgetting something, but yeah. So anything that, that alters the spectrum, windows is a Sun Cosmetic. <clears throat> Open the window. Anything that alters the spectrum of light, we need to get it out of our life. Number 30, the seasonal diet and ketogenic diet. So circadian nutrition, basically 
somebody who is overweight or leptin resistance needs to follow a ketogenic, low carb, low high fat uh, type of template until you fix that leptin resistance. I'll hook up the leptin webinar. So watch that. It goes over what leptin is, what it's doing and also the prescription to fix your leptin resistance. Um, even if you're 100, 150, 200 pounds, I mean, it shouldn't take you more than a year, 18 months. Okay? If it takes you longer than that, if it's been taking you your whole life, then, hey, you've been focusing on diet and exercise. And focusing on diet and exercise is not going to get you the results. Okay? You may lose weight here and there, but it's not about losing weight. It's about health and maintaining your health through your entire life. Okay, so seasonal diet. So it's July now, and my carb intake is pretty high. Okay, so um, I'm really digging into these fruits. So just went to the farmer uh, the other day, got some cantaloupe, some green apples, some grapes, uh, some peaches, and picked up some vegetables as well, some green tomatoes, cabbage zucchini so loving it okay i'm gonna love it any more even more when the red apples come in season and the watermelon okay all right so number 31 is your smart meter okay so your smart meter you can replace it you can call your electric company and tell them to replace it uh, i know i posted a video the other day uh on facebook and they told me they took it out and they didn't charge her for it. So usually on their website, they say it's a $43 replacement fee to take out this, the smart one and put it with the analog one. And then it's a $25 monthly recurring fee basically for the guy to come out and read the meter. Um, so she's saying that she only paid the $43 and then they're not charging her the $25, but um, <clears throat> you can, Try that. I know it's different in different places. So this is Ohio. Um, Ohio's got different laws than Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Minnesota, and all that stuff. So you got to check with your local municipality. But if that's not an option, the smart meter cover, I did a whole video. I'll link that up. Basically, I put the smart meter cover on and tested it before, tested it after. Bam, wiped the, the signals right out. Okay, and then... Right under the smart meter, my daughter's room and my son's room. And before I got the smart meter, I basically moved, because their beds were right on the wall there, I moved them onto the other side of the wall, which was a little bit better until I got that smart meter cover. All right, number 32. 32, energy and negativity jabronis. Okay, so if you are always around negative do nothing jabronis and they're basically hogging your energy they're causing you to have stress that's a environment and that's an environment you need to change okay so i understand sometimes this could be family and sometimes it's a close family so sometimes it's a spouse or sometimes it's a child sometimes it's a crazy sister-in-law or brother-in-law or somebody okay but you can determine how much time you spend with them and if it is a close person maybe it's you that's causing that energy and you need to change your energy around to bring everything back into even keel um, or into positive keel okay so that's yeah life is energy and energy is life and again, if we don't have it, if we have things that are sapping it from us, we need to remove those or distance ourselves as much as possible from those, okay? Because they're stealing our electrons, they're stealing our ATP, okay? We don't want people being electron vampires. All right, 33, vitamin D levels. What is your vitamin D level? So vitamin D level is basically a snapshot into your sun exposure, snapshot into your natural immunity okay natural immunity is what helps us fight viruses okay you don't need to be afraid of lab released viruses 
Okay. And I mean, it's been going on since 2000, Ebola, the swine flu and all that stuff. And they're going to keep coming up with more and more and more because the people they're trying to control you. So I was just, before I was just on this video, I was watching uh, the Corbett report. He was talking about the world economic forum and basically anybody that does anything in the world that has influence on the world is basically has one degree separation from the world economic forum. So they're either directly attached to them or they're on their board or in their meetings or they're connected somehow to the world economic forum. Klaus Schwab, look him up. I'll hook that, that Corbett report up so you can watch it. It's basically world economic forum is one of the, one of the people, one of the groups that are not elected, but they basically control the entire world. It's like Bill Gates, who's a member of the World Economic Forum. Okay. Uh, but, whoa, I went off a tangent there. So get your vitamin D levels tested. Uh, you can do it through your doctor. I'm about to do it here uh, in a couple months. And uh, there's a test thorn through Thorn. You can do it at home as well. I'll hook that up as well. Number 34 <clears throat> is magnesium. 34, magnesium. This is a, so I'm not doing magnesium right now. Um, if you watch the, the supplement episode I did last, uh, the last episode, number six, but I'm not doing magnesium right now. And it's a case by case basis. Some people swear by it. Some people don't, but remember one thing, magnesium is hydrophilic. So it loves water and it needs water to work. So if you are not fully hydrated, then taking magnesium is just, you're just wasting your money. And the magnesium you want to avoid is magnesium oxide. That's basically if you're, if you're constipated, then you would need magnesium oxide. But if, if you're constipated, it means you're doing something not right. Because um, you shouldn't be constipated if you are following the rules of nature and the rules of sleep and everything. Okay, but magnesium three and eight, um, magnesium I believe, citrate, and there's some other ones that Dr. Cruz recommends and that I used to take. Um, I'll link those up for you as well. I will probably get back on magnesium late fall, winter, and I'll probably get back off in, um, in the spring. So my magnesium is seasonal. All right, number 30, there are two more. Number 35, I uh, just started doing this, and it's the grounding rod and socks. So from Less EMF, I bought a grounding rod, and I basically obviously put it in the ground and took the wire up through the room, and then they have metallic socks, and you put the socks on, and the grounding rod ends with a gator clip. You just click that gator clip onto the sock. And basically, through the night, you're getting electrons. So I've only been doing this a few nights. But I can tell a little bit different. Um, again, I didn't feel good past four nights. So I've probably only been doing it like a week. Um, so I'll, I'll be able to tell more as I go into it and go from there and but yeah that's a that's a good one and actually i'm going to take the grounding rod <clears throat> i'm going to order more clips i'm going to take the grounding rod and cook it connect it to my my cold tub so i'll be grounded when i'm in the cold tub and um, another one i'm going to hook through uh, to my eventual tent so when I'm sleeping outside, grounded, and I'll have another one going through the window uh, when I watch TV. So I'll be grounded pretty much most of the day. Awesome. Gaining electrons all day long. All right. And then number 36 is a, a Magnetico sleep mattress. So Jack Cruz talks about this all the time. I don't have a Magnetico. It's basically, <clears throat> you're basically sleeping on a magnet. 
Okay, so when we sleep, our magnetism increases. Um, the areas with the high, highest magne magnetism is the brain and the heart. Heart is more than the brain. <clears throat> and yeah, basically it's, yeah, he talks wonders about it. Um, I don't know too much about it. I know they're expensive and I know they have come in different gosses. So it's like, I know he recommends if you are like living in New York City in the 24 story high rise, I mean, you need the highest magnet possible. I mean, there's not really, you're going to need more than a magnet if you're living there, as that's really, really a EMF hellhole. But um, yeah, I'll link that up and then link something that he says about that there as well. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do this in two parts here. Uh, we'll come back with the, the meme of the week and the closing of this and then also the Jack Cruz part of the podcast that we go over something profound that he says. All right. So I'll be back. And now here's one of our messages from one of our sponsors. Listen up. 34 day light challenge. Your light environment is more important than the food you eat and the exercise you do. The world needs more light gurus and less food ones. This path requires that you suspend the belief that to get healthy all you have to do is change your diet and start exercising. This is a half truth that is missing the other half. The other half is the reason why we are in the middle of multiple disease epidemics. The 34 day light challenge is not a nutrition or exercise challenge. This challenge will teach you all you need to know about the health habits in regards to light, natural and artificial that will put you on your path to optimal. Mitochondria is our powerhouse of the cell and if it goes bad then it doesn't matter what you do in terms of nutrition, exercise, supplements, drugs, doctor visits, yada yada yada. Until you fix the mitochondria, your health will suffer. Think of it as an engine of your car. Do you get more scared when the service engine light comes on or the low fuel light comes on? You probably have seen the low fu fuel light many times before. Maybe you are one who actually ran out of gas. But when that engine light comes on, it's a big, uh-oh, what's wrong and how much is this going to cost me? When your engine breaks, the fuel you put in makes no difference at all. The 34-day light challenge is going to help you fix your engine. Register today at improvementwarriorfitness.com slash light challenge. And we're back to finish out the podcast. Found a great sleep post from Dr. Cruz in his Cold Thermogenesis series. And first, we're going to get into the May May of the week, which is actually based off the article that I found. So his article comes from Cold Thermogenesis 2. And the meme is, we use light to yoke our metabolism to our sleep, except when it is, when it is cold. Okay, and we'll go into more detail here uh, with his post here, Cold Thermogenesis series. This was actually the first series that I read, and I actually read them out of order. I would not recommend reading this one first. Uh, there's some other key blogs to read out of order and then get into certain series, but um, this was the, it was the reason I started Cold Thermogenesis back in November of 2018. But we'll get into this here. So he says, we stop using photic light cycles to yoke our metabolism to our sleep when it is cold. There is an epigenetic switch in us that stops our suprachiasmatic nucleus from using light in cold environments. This is done by evolution, by design, 
because light cycles do not become important in freezing cold because carbohydrates cannot grow in these environments. This is tied to ubiquination rates. Ubiquination rates is basically protein turnover, which for the cell is the actual worst thing that can happen. You don't want protein turnover. So this is tied to ubiquination rates and how light control carbon utilization from foods. So evolution designed a plan to teach mammals who cannot think as humans can. We can control our environment, but wild animals cannot. When an animal has no way to control its environment away from the equator at higher latitudes, the best way to yoke the season cycles at our poles is to use temperature instead. That is precisely what happens in plants and animals. Humans seem to think they are immune to this condition. So right now, I want you to be aware of this metabolic trap door. Its mere presence is shocking enough, but its implications are far greater for modern humans because of how they link to ubiquination rates in cells. Okay, so um, it turns out on cold environments, light becomes less dominant in signaling. Today, we know it is no longer, today we know it is not true any longer in seasonally cold environments. This means that if evolutionary biology gave up on light for some reason, switched and used cold temperatures to monitor, monitor how to use carbon in us when light levels were uncoupled from our mitochondria, in seasons where light is not dominant. It raises a question, what else might happen to our metabolism in the cold? Evolution does not do these things without reason. She was quick to point out that this ability has been lost in modern humans, in her estimation because of our discovery and widespread use of artificial light. We know Paris, France became the first city in our world that used artificial light in 1924. So Edison invented the light bulb in, 19, in 1879. Not until 1924 was an entire city using it. Okay. Today, New York City is known as the city that never sleeps. I think most humans are not really aware of how basic circadian mismatches destroy our biology slowly via the slow erosion of metabolic function by the use of artificial light frequencies. The heart has a lot of mitochondrial density. After this blog is through, you might know why this makes complete sense. The reason has to do with the slow erosion of the process of autophagy in humans due to the circadian mismatches created by our choices in life when they are married to the rapidity to the development of our Neolithic brain. In essence, humans became so smart, so fast eating DHA, we became able to control too much of our environment for our epigenetic and genetic good. The smarter we became, the more mismatches we, became, we were able to create. This causes our biology to become uncoupled from our cell cycle and metabolism for longer than just autumn or winter. We became able to live disconnected from nature for decades. For humans, this disconnection of chronobiology led to a steady walk over thousands of years to become the less efficient metabolically during sleep. This is especially true during REM sleep when autophagy dominates our biology. Autophagy is used to set ubiquitin marketing or ubiquitin marking to fix and recycle proteins for repair. Reduced autophagy leads to heart failure and it will lead to brain shrinkage. So this means biologic mismatches are best measured in animals by looking at their rates of heart failure. For humans, the rates are staggering. That is a big clue that what we all believe to be true could be, that is a big clue that what we all believe to be true could be what is actually killing us slowly. Remember, autophagy occurs when we sleep. We 
can also extend autophagy through fasting, intermittent fasting, and also exercise. Okay. So last paragraph here. Moreover, when one looks at biology and biochemistry of sleep and truly understands the power of autophagy for longevity, it becomes apparent that we may want to consider that maybe sleep is our primordial condition and not wakefulness. Maybe, just maybe, we evolved consciousness over time. This theory I have follows the thoughts I have developed in my cold thermogenesis theory, because in extreme cold environments, the process of autophagy becomes super sensitized to save energy while it increases our metabolic capacities. Remember when Jessica Gamble said that humans in dark, deep holes become more energized and productive in her TED Talk, and I will hook up the TED Talk in the show notes. The reason why is cold, dark environments supersensitize the human process of autophagy without us actually having to sleep at all. The cause is an increased in efficiency of autophagy by cold and dark. This metabolic trapdoor does something to us that we cannot do in long light cycles. To get super sensitive autophagy and light, we have to sleep well. This is an example of how metabolism and biochemistry can rewire or become thermoplastic in cold and dark environments. Okay. So, super important passage there, which goes to show you, I mean, number on my original 15, I think the first two or three, it was sleep in as cold a room as possible and sleep in as dark a room as possible. So, and you just had one big, huge reason why uh, you can't get into REM sleep in a warm, well-lit room, and uh, autophagy occurs in REM sleep the most. So, very important. I will hook up that uh, blog post. So it's just seven pages. It's one of his shorter ones, but it's one of his more important ones. The cold thermogenesis series is something I highly recommend. Um, his cold thermogenesis four and six are one of his, uh, I'd say, landmark blog posts. Um, very important to read. Very important to get down. But I mean, sleep is is vital. If you cannot sleep, then you will slowly die. And artificial light, blue light, is one of those things that will just fuck you up beyond all recognition. So it will foobar you, and it will destroy you. So, I mean, Paris, France started using, was the first city to, citywide to use artificial lighting. Okay? I challenge you to find any man, Neolithic disease that we're facing now, all of these heart disease, cancer, you can't find it before 1924. You can't find it before 1900. But now heart disease is the number one killer. Cancer is number two, and then the stroke, neurodegenerative disease, Alzheimer's, dementia, all that stuff is, I believe, number four. Because number three is doctors. and uh, Doctors' mistakes, medical mistakes. And actually, you should put them at number one because the advice they're giving and the recommendations that they, they give lead to heart disease and lead to cancer and lead to neurodegenerative disease. So, yeah, so we got we to gotta fix that sleep. And this, this podcast is going to be one that helps you and 36 tips. So you don't need to implement them all at once. I mean, I would say the first 15, that's what I originally – did and started with and yeah so cold dark block the blue light get the sunlight and go from there but <clears throat> yeah you've got to get your sleep right because i mean we could sleep wrong for decades i used to sleep under a, a night light as a kid okay that's just completely stupid um and if you have a kid that's doing that or you have a a family member that's doing that, send them this podcast. Send them uh, Jack's information on 
sleep and everything. Uh, they do make red light night lights, but again, the room has to be as dark as possible. Okay, so a red light shining through the night is not good. Uh, I know there was the study with Suzanne Summers, who put it in her book, that they just shined a one of those uh, pinpoint the red spotlight pointer thingies. They shined just that little dot on the back of somebody's leg, and their melatonin was suppressed. I don't know the exact numbers, but it was suppressed by at least I think twenty five percent or something. It was a big number. Okay, so the room needs to be as dark as possible, and preferably cold as possible. So sleep outside if you can, especially in the winter. Okay, or just open a window. Always open a window. Okay, that's one of the tips as well. Okay, we can go on and on and on and on. I will be making more sleep issues because I'm sure um, those other 20, I, I mean, I just came up off the top of my head. And I'm sure more will pop into my head and we'll do more future podcasts on them. And I will talk more about sleep and why it is vital, vital to your health. So it's <clears throat> listed number seven on my 14 pillars of health. But it ties into everything. Okay? If your light is wrong, your sleep will be wrong. If your magnetism is wrong, your sleep will be wrong. If your water is wrong, your sleep will be wrong. If your exercise is wrong, your sleep will be wrong. Okay? If your stress is wrong, sleep will be wrong. Nutrition is wrong, sleep will be wrong. Posture is wrong, sleep will be wrong. You sit too much, sleep will be wrong. Okay? Everything ties into sleep. Everything ties into sleep. And that's why mammals, or some mammals, they sleep through the winter. Okay? That's like an autophagy uh, lightning bolt right there. Okay? <clears throat> some people, I wish, uh, they probably wish they could sleep through winter. Sometimes I do. I mean, cold is not, is not my favorite thing to do. Okay? But I do it. I force myself to do it. Okay? Every day, I force myself to do it. But enjoying the summer months right now, so let's not think about the cold too much right now. But um, yeah, if you have questions on anything that I've covered in this podcast, let me know. Share this out to anybody who is having problems with sleeping, anybody having problem getting to sleep, anybody who's on sleep meds, anybody who's on caffeine pills. I used to take caffeine pills in college. Okay, anybody who's on two, three, four, five cups of coffee, anybody who's drinking coffee all day long, used to have a client that came in 7 p.m. or 7.30 with a cup of coffee. It's like, dude, come on. You got to get that caffeine out of you. Okay? We got to get the natural, natural brain working, natural energy, all that stuff. All right, but that is <clears throat> it for this podcast. Don't forget, support me on Patreon. And uh, PayPal should be coming soon. Rate the podcast. Let me know what you think so we can get this out to other people. And if you have questions, ask your questions. Tell me what you want to see in the future, want to hear in the future, what videos you want to hear, what posts you want to see. Follow me on social media, all that good stuff. Otherwise, you have a great day. Get outside. Get your vitamin D. I'll talk to you later. Have a great day. Stay strong. Stay positive. Be the improvement warrior. If you would like to support this podcast and my other content creation ventures, please visit me on Patreon to become a patron of the Improvement Warrior podcast. The podcast may be free for you, but it definitely is not free for me. So even if it is just a $1 pledge, a $3, or $50, I would greatly appreciate it. Plus, my patrons are going to have say in upcoming episodes, upcoming topics, first dibs on future Q&A podcasts, what future guests to have on, as well as some other Patreon-only type stuff. Just search on Patreon for Improvement Warrior. It will also be listed in the show notes, and you can become a donor to the show, or you can check out the other services that I have there on 
as well. Thank you in advance. We are always looking for ratings for the podcast. It helps my podcast be found by others looking to improve their life and health, as well as it helps us get ranked higher. So please help us out so that I may continue bringing this life-changing podcast to you and others around the world. Just go to the leave a review section of your favorite podcast listening app and let us know what you think. Five stars is preferred, but please be honest. Thank you in advance.